Okie dokie. Um, see if this is working. Looks like everything is going well. Oh. Oh, well. Um, good. Up. Oh, getting right into it, aren't we? We go on the beach soaking wet. Salt water is singing the insides of your throat as if you nearly drowned. Water falls from your mouth as you open it to gasp for air. You have no memory of how you got here. In fact, you can only remember your own name, not where you came from, or a single fact about your life. What you do know is that, despite the outrageous beauty of the landscape around you, You'll feel incredibly sick to your stomach. Wow, I really went down the wrong pipe, huh? You need a minute? Or can I go on? Because I can give you a minute. We've got plenty of time. Endless time, really. An eternity, if you catch my drift. Oh, not now, Ocean. Sorry, uh, Kaelin, may I continue? Please go on. Okay then, as I was, <laughs> as I was saying, you look down at your feet, angle deep in the crystal blue water of a newly arrived wave. As the water recedes back into the ocean, it reveals a grotesque discovery. Ugh. A decomposing face stares up at you from beneath the sand. All you can do is vomit a stream of dark bile, bugs, worms, and other ick. Questions race through your mind. Where are you? How did you get here? Who's behind this incredibly charming and well-spoken voice in your head? However, answers don't come easy. Your mind is completely blank. What will you do? I dig up that face! <laughs> Run? Um... Close your eyes. You close your eyes. This must be a nightmare, right? This is not happening. This is not happening. The mantra censors you, and you're briefly able to find peace. The lapping waves go silent. For the first time in your entire life, it feels like you're in control. Uh, false sense of control? And when you open your eyes... Nope, it's still there. You're in the exact same place, except now the disgusting corpse face is smiling at you? Even the dead have a wondrous time on our island. I promise you will too. Don't worry. We're going to do just fine. We wouldn't want anyone else. That was sure weird. That voice again. Do oceans normally talk? Your memory isn't right. But you're pretty sure you remember learning as a child that oceans do not speak directly to people in spooky terms. Mine doesn't have a chance to linger any longer on your current situation, as you feel something soft bump into your foot. Oh! It's a volleyball. When you look down, you find a volleyball sitting in the sand there next to you. You stare down, frozen. A voice calls out from behind you. Little help, please? Turn around, and when you see what's waiting for you, your jaw just about hits the ground. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Let's go. They're all pretty good. Huntress and Spirit, though, are the ones I would try to go for. Four gorgeous monsters stand halfway between you and a well-tended volleyball court. Each of them oozes with undead energy, a magical aura reaching out and penetrating you via your eyes. 
Your heart begins to race. Curiosity, fear, desire. You can't help but stare at these casually dressed... Let's call them killers. I don't know, not to be judgmental. It's just the energy they put out there. So many competing feelings fresh through your mind at once that you are completely paralyzed. Hello? There are weird days, and then there's this. All you can do is look down at the ball and back up at this monstrous lineup of, well, literal monsters. Sexy ass monsters, though. What do you do? Um. They know thanks. They nothing, do nothing, kick it back, toss it back. Hmm. Uh. I don't know. Toss it back? You bend down and grab the ball. It's warm from sitting in the sand on this beautiful day. When you give a ball a toss, it arcs beautifully through the air and lands right in Huntress's hands. Not bad, stranger. Yes, I think I picked the right one. Huntress's muscles ripple as she grips it in her hand. You look her up and down and consider what it might be like to be held tightly in those strong arms. Warm, perhaps. Maybe a little sweaty, but that's okay. It's natural. Try hard much? Blech. Speaking directly to you, you still can't bring yourself to reply. You're entranced. When you snap out of it, you realize that everyone has gone back to the volleyball court. Alone again, you look across the beach at these strange residents who casually bat a volleyball back and forth Happily ignoring your intrusion onto their private beach. Should you be frightened? Worried? Excited? I refer to them as killers. Uh, not to give too much away. But at the same time, damn, they're looking very appealing in their own way. And nobody so much has lifted a blood-soaked finger in your direction. Don't be scared, Kaelin. You were made for this. Oh geez, if the spooky ocean voice says not to be scared, I'm sure it's going to all work out. With no good reason not to, you decide to head over and see what happens next. Looks like you've derailed the volleyball game just by showing up. You derailed my, the game just by showing up, nitwit. Yes, you're also a nitwit. Look, it's just best just to go with what Trapper says when he says it. That's a policy I, I hold for pretty much anyone who always seems to have fresh blood on their hands. Hey, don't worry about it. It's not just a game. Existence, that is. Besides, you seem a lot more interesting than a silly game. What's your deal? What brings you here? I mean... They're here to do more than distract from my total domination. <sighs> that was Wraith. That sign means he was done with the game too. Either that or he saw a butterfly or something. Look, I don't care why the slack-jawed moron is here. I just want to know, can I kill them or not? <laughs> you know you can't. At least not yet. Oh yeah, not yet. Hey, Kaelin. You might want to know, or you might want to, you know, say something. Actually, never mind. There'll be plenty of time for that soon enough. Right now, this group has some questions for you. But be warned, answer quickly and answer well. This is a timed quiz. <laughs> oh no. I know it will be very important later. <laughs> very important. Or not important in any way whatsoever. Probably that one. I can't remember. Hmm. Uh, how attractive would you say you are? Ugh, oh no. Um, dude, I don't know. Average, I guess. Pretty average, I think. I guess not a face in a crowd. Another normal, meaningless life in an endless cycle. I think you're quite cute myself. Like a chipmunk or a grizzly bear. If you have any superpower, what would it be? Super strength. Yeah, I think Huntress would like that. Super strength would be cool. 
Strength is all about muscles. True strength is up here. You expect Trapper to point his head, but instead he taps on his bulging soldiers. Specifically in these muscles. Nobody gives a shit about your calves. What is your best subject in school? Skipping class? <laughs> Math, history, oh. Dude, I don't know. Skipping class. You could say I majored in skipping class. <laughs> I think uh, Spirit would like that one. If I'd ever gone to school, I'm sure I would have done great in skipping class. I prefer skipping over walking almost always. Your favorite animal. What is it? A mustelid? A dog or a cat? Definitely cat. What? Why is everyone looking at me? You think just because I'm the typical cute goth girl, I have some specific love for all things cats? And more specifically, black cats? Well, they do, but you can all go to hell anyway. What's your favorite color? Three day old corpse, blood red, blue. Blue. Blue isn't good for productivity, makes people want to be lazy. Your dream job. Hit club promoter. Not working at all. We get to do what we really want. Why work at all? It takes a lot of courage to break free from society's expectations to climb the ladder. Only she could spin laziness into some kind of grand crusade. These damn millennials. Best flavor of ice cream. Oh. Um... I don't know, I'm pretty vanilla. My favorite is pain. Same. Same here. Mine is vanilla, swirled with pain. I think mint chip is the greatest flavor I ever conceived myself. I don't know about ice cream. Am I right? Hold on a second, this reminds me. I am right. Always. It's a lesson you should learn before we go too much further. Do what I say if you want to survive. Pick mint chip. We're teaching lessons now, narrator? You rascal. Kill or be killed is the rule on this island, even for faceless voices. Tell me, what's the best flavor of ice cream? Uh, I do like mint chip. Best flavor is mint chip. So obedient. I think you're gonna do just fine. Anywho, now that I didn't know so much about you, I'm sure the group wants to see you to start getting to know them. I'm Trapper. I pretty much run things around here. I'm the smartest, richest, strongest person on this whole island. I don't like losers. If you... If you want to know what a loser is, say hello to Wraith. I'm Wraith. I'm nothing like any, everyone else. I like nice people and loathe big dumb idiots. Hey, what's up? I'm Spirit. I don't like most things. I don't really hate most things either. Not worth my time. Things I do hate, I really hate, you know? Based on my personal observations, life is nothing but suffering. And society is a carefully calculated lie. They keep everyone subservient to those in power. Better to choose to just not take part. <laughs> Jeez, it's like she's downright murdered by society. She hates it so much. No, no, wait. I'm remembering Spirit's story now. That's almost exactly what happened. Hey, I'm Huntress. Don't let these bummers get you down. There's lots of fun to be had on this island, along with lots of love. Yeah, there is. You know what I mean. Grow up. Grow a body. I've explained this a thousand times. I'm dead, but, I don't, but I'm not a literal ghost. I just create a trail of fog. I'm not made of it. Whatever, fog body. That's not nice. He's not nice. You love it. Only sometimes. You really? That's disgusting. That's why she likes it. <laughs> don't speak for me. I also hate it. Stop speaking entirely, actually. 
First time ever. I agree with Wraith. Let's move on. Otherwise, they'll do this all day. Besides, if I know this crew, and I do, I want to show off soon enough. We're done playing. Let's do something else instead. Wow, I want to actually agree with the meathead. Let's see if we go to my yacht. It's the massive boat dock nearby. Give everyone a taste of true luxury and power. Wraith rolls his eyes. I don't mind him. He just hates fun and happiness. No, I hate the endless, desperate, soul-crushing pursuit of wealth, the way it's flaunted needlessly, and the cruelty it engenders. Huh? Oh, got you there, Wraith. I agree with you. How about hanging out by the pool? I find the water calming. Simple, beautiful. Hey, what about our volleyball game? We can exercise and have some fun as a group. Are you all serious? A perfectly good lounge. Uh, there's a perfectly good lounge to chill out right, right there. I'm tired, and besides, I hate being in the sun. Where do you want to go? Um, well, we want to go with Huntress, so volleyball. I'm assuming that's the lounge for uh, spirits. Yeah, Huntress. I hate that I interrupted your game. You should finish it. Yay! I love to play outdoors. I also love to meet new people. I also love to bring them home to play. I'm sort of a big kid at heart. Obviously you are too. I like you already. I hate people who are too serious. They ruin everything. Well, they do if you don't handle them. Swiftly. Hold on. Just for a moment. This is Dwight and Claudette, our activities coordinator. They're also the, the cooks, waiters, bartenders, janitors, and every other job. The only remaining help on the island. Oh. This place we call it... Murderer's Island. View dramatic musical flourish. None of the others survived. Ahem, survived the interview process, I mean. Hence why we shall therefore refer to them as survivors, with a capital S. These two have worked here a long time. Not very long. I don't actually know how long it's been. Sorry. Anyway, I should probably let Dwight and Claudette do their mandated jobs. They sure look happy, but they're vibrating with a nervous energy that is starting to give me the creeps. We'll now escort the group to the venue of your choosing. However, in the future we recommend waiting for us to present you with your options whenever possible, and not just run off to various activities unsupervised. There are not much autonomy around here. At least, the least you can do is allow us to do our job. The most you could do is allow us to get off this I Wait! Yes, pardon me. Follow us. A narrator? Yes, something I can help you with. Are those two. Claudette and Dwight. Did they just start to mention something about wanting to escape? Escape an option? Should I be trying to escape? Escape? Them? Oh, no, no, no. I think you're mistaken. Seemed like Dwight was asking for help to get off this island, though. Oh, right, that. Yes, that's true, he was. But he just meant that he wants to get the other vacation island getaway. Uh, a couple of miles south of here. It has much fancier accommodations than this island. One of those big corporate outfits, quite exclusive, where all the famous celebrities hang out. Very luxurious. Doesn't quite have the charm that this island has, though. Trust me, you wouldn't want to go there. With all that money comes a lot of restrictions. This is where you belong. Now, now, off you go. Time for an activity. On this island, your decisions matter, mostly. But I agree with them. Not like that other island. So, what'll it be? Huntress. 
Oh, it's so exciting to have someone else. Uh, exciting to have someone else in athletics on the island. Beard and Wraith are so boring. Trappers is so predictable. Relying on brute strength to win games. He has no respect at all for grace and skill. Thank goodness you didn't choose the yacht. What kind of a person wants to be a sitting duck in the middle of the open ocean? You're just asking for a sneak attack from an elk. I wonder how long it would take her uh, take for her to bring up an elk attack. Game's starting up again. Make sure you're watching close. It's really something, huh? Elk don't swim. Uh, actually they do. They can. I'm in the forest long enough and you'll see an elk swim, believe me, me. Cheer for me, cute stuff? <laughs> the killers resumed their place on the volleyball court and resumed the match they were playing before you arrived. Hey, fancy lemonade. I see you're working up a thirst eyeing those bouncing buns playing volleyball. But it hands you your lemonade. Ah, so fresh, so tart. He leans in and whispers in your ear. Who'd you bet on to win, hmm? Who's the MVP of your little heart? You're nervous. You don't want any of these killers to hear you talking about them. Or not talking about them. They're into that sort of thing. Let's pick someone. Please, it's not like we've got all day. Week. Night. Month. Year. Lifetime. Eternity. Or anything. Who put sand in that guy's shorts? Sheesh. Oh, hey, I think, uh... I think we'll probably go with Huntress. Huntress. Oh shoot, Huntress overheard you. I think she would like that. Oh, you got your eye on me. I'm flattered that you think I'm good, but honestly, I'm a little annoyed that I've been so flashy with my moves. Usually I'm so sneaky that you can barely see me at all. Huntress is totally kicking my butt. Correct answer. <laughs> I'm allowed to support the other people on this island, right? Oh, jeez. I have no idea what the rules are here. Are there even rules? I, um... Should have stayed in my secret... Uh, my secret Larry. Wow, what a game. It's a tie. Can there even be a tie in volleyball? No one knows, since this is everyone's first time playing. These killers don't usually have time for team sports amid their busy schedule of brutally tearing survivors to shreds. Hey, is Claudette crying? Are you okay, Claudette? Probably just shedding a tear for her lost fellow survivors. You know, this resort had four employees when it opened. It's nothing, I'm totally fine. Whatever you say, boss. Oh, look. Killers have dispersed, and they're all cooling down in their own way. Uh, Spirit is reading a novel. Trapper is stretching sensually in between chainsaw curls. Wraith is standing on the beach, desperately hoping that sand will swallow him up. And Huntress is doing some target practice with her bloodied hatchet. Now you feel a nudge. What is looking at you expectantly? You should really make a move. Life is short. He gets snuffed out at any time of day. Carpe diem. Carpe pm. Carpe nowum. <laughs> Go ahead, chat one of them up. So which killer has caught your eye? Huntress. You head over to Huntress. After all, this whole sport, sporty hangout thing was her idea. Might as well see how she's doing. You were really great out there. Where did you learn to move like that? Whose moves? My moves? These moves? They're nothing. Huntress blushes a bit from beneath her mask. It's cute on cute if you ask me. Sometimes you gotta look past some bloodstains. A lot of men have run for their lives in my presence. You really learn a, a lot about what the human body is capable of in those types of scenarios. I love to exercise. In a way, we're all running for our lives when we keep in shape. Guess I'd never thought of fitness that way. Uh, maybe it's time to start. You never know who's coming for you. 
through the brush as fast as they can, prepared forward by hunger, desperation, just plain old boredom. It seems like boredom is going to be your problem, surrounded by all these characters. So Ivor, on the other hand, you're going to need to be, uh, you're going to need to compensate for your lack of killer instinct. What's your style? Grit or imagination? Well, I don't know which one. Which one do you think the Huntress would appreciate more? Um. Hey, Val. How's it going? Thank you for the redeems. Uh, hydrate and stretch. Oh, that's that's actually you know what? I don't have anything. <laughs> you know what? I should go get something to drink. Thank you for the reminder. But I will stretch. Oh. Oh. Okay, much better. Okay, I shall be right back. Okay, I'm going to lemonade. I don't know how good that's going to be for my voice, especially since I'm going to be reading a lot, but we'll go for it. You know, I think Huntress would like grit a lot more than imagination, but... Go with grit. Uh, I might not be strong, but I'm tough, you know what I mean? <laughs> like Chewy? You do not seem to know what you mean. Uh, uh, doesn't sound like it was the right answer. Oh no. <laughs> like, ready for anything? To do whatever it takes to survive. Oh sure, I hold your enemy's head down in the river until the shouting stops and the rushing water takes his life away with it. Um, maybe not anything. I'm ready for a lot of things. Get ready to impress, because we're just getting started. Come on, everyone. Fun and games can't be over already. I get it, I get it. Volleyball? Not ruthless enough. Look at us. We crave action. We crave excitement. We crave the thrill of the hunt. It's time to see if our friend here has the hunter's instinct. Just so you surveying me, like prey on the volleyball court, Kaelin. Hunter waves a bloody axe in the air, and you step back nervously before you realize she's not waving it at you. Handing it to you. Don't worry, I've got several of these. It's important to hone your skills, especially when you're in a new place where threats may lurk around every corner. Alright, can we like save the game? I'm kind of curious. How does this work? Uh... Even a new file? Okay, okay. I'm gonna see if we have like a mini game coming up, it sounds like it maybe with the hatchet? Who knows? You need to make sure that you are the biggest threat of all. Just don't aim those things at me. You can't even see me. Aha, I was right. Mini game. Uh -uh.
parts. Um, on top, a pointer which rotates in clockwise direction. On the bottom, a target you're going to be pointing at. Sometimes the target is immediately visible, sometimes it's hidden under the point until the pointer arrives. Press the space bar to stop the pointer while it's over the target to win. Fail to land on the target and you will lose. If you have a perfect success, land on the start uh, of the target area, not the end. Uh, ready? Here we go, show them what you got. Okay, perfect. Missed completely. Nope. Missed completely. Perfect. Whoa. Oh! Missed completely. Oh, I'm impressed over the field. Okay, okay, okay. I think we can do better. I want to try that one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ready, let's go. Perfect. Not bad. Perfect. Perfect. Oh. I think that was that was better. I think that was good enough. I'm impressed, a worthy opponent. I mean, could have done better, but who's keeping score? Okay, come on, one more time. One more time. We can do this. <laughs> I know, Val. I want to try again. <laughs> hey, kitty, you can't you can't distract me. Stop. Go away. Okay, thank you for the lurk. I appreciate it. I understand. <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> Two perfects. Okay, three perfects. These last two are going to be hard. Okay, is that good enough? Okay, perfect. Alright, this last one though. Okay, four, four, come on. That's gotta be better, right? Oh, okay. Good damn better who's keeping score. I think we, uh, we did good enough. For the record, I am. And you got eight points. <laughs> At your throne. Cool, I guess. I like my stabbing to be a bit more up close and personal. Some more allowed horn blows and the survivors snap into action. Time's up. You heard him. Get to the next activity. I'm kind of curious as to, because I was watching Bisky play this the other night. And she's going for like the spirit. And the game has already kind of taken a little bit of a different uh, route so far that I can tell. Pretty interesting. Uh, seems like the next activity is mealtime. How quaint. You were expecting what? Capture the flag? Do you know how complicated it is trying to game like that? Much more so than sitting and talking. Arrive at the cookout area to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered around. What, are you ex what were you expecting? Some kind of grand hall with a huge banquet table? This ain't some prestigious fantasy epic like you'd find on cable. Um, the white and Clyde usher you to your seat. There is very limited seating directly around you. And oh, great, terrific! Seems that everyone wants to sit next to you. Even better is that they don't want to sit next to certain other people either. Start. No one wants to sit next to Trapper. <laughs> okay. Me included. Trapper is like... Terrible. I don't like him. Uh, 
Okay. Um. Meanwhile, he refuses to sit next to Wraith or Trickster. Um. Wait, Trickster. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh yeah, Trickster's here. Surprise. Now well, they don't call him Expected Stir. I'm sorry. Even I get nervous around crowds of killers. And my whole stick it gets a little flustered. Hey there. You're looking good, Galen. Real good. <laughs> I really can't let Huntress and Trapper sit together. Wait. Is... Okay. Wait. So Trapper's okay with sitting next to Huntress. But Huntress doesn't want to sit next to Trapper? I thought he was okay with sitting... He was only okay with not sitting next to Spirit and Wraith. Ugh. No, seriously, their arms are too big. Oh, okay. They can't fit at the table if they sit side by side. Look at this. Can't even fit everyone on screen at the same time. You probably think it was an error, but it's not. This is completely intentional. Let it be a lesson to you. Every error you think you see is a choice. Got that? Okay, the White and Claudette are directing traffic. You sit on one side, the rest of them will sit opposite you. Huntress and Trapper can sit at the ends with their enormous sexy arms. Now that everyone is seated, we can begin dinner. That night's meal was prepared slowly and carefully with both love and hate for 12 hours over a spit. We hope you all enjoy. We really, really hope you do. Hey! You didn't actually tell us what you're serving. What are we eating? It's meat. Seasoned with a specific number of special herbs and spices that we simply can't divulge. Okay. So it begs the question, what kind of meat is it? Right. We're not cannibals here. Meat is good. Meat is murder. <laughs> but you'd know what you've been up to. Who are you to get judgy now? I'm just, I'm just sharing facts. And you need to murder something to eat its meat. So that's, like, technically true. Technically true is the best kind of true. Okay, enough yapping. Let's eat. Hey, Halen, you thinking what I'm thinking? There's going to be a person on that spit, right? Oh, it's... Oh. Uh. Several parts of overlapping people, perhaps. I've seen many pigs wearing palm tree button down prints, you know. You look closely at the spit. You spot what definitely appears to be scraps of fabric sandwiched between some layers of meat. Oh no. <laughs> I feel like I might get sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours. And we do literally everything on this island. Actually, there's one thing you're not doing today. Not covering up this delectable meal. Oh, he's right for a change. As I am with my broad axe. It's a perfect tool for easily chopping anything in twain. Alright, let's save. I think we're gonna get another mini game here. First, who says twain? Sometimes I swear it's like we're all from completely different historical eras. Uh, which I think is a true. Second, I'll handle this with my cleaver. Fast, powerful, and clean. At least it's clean when the meat is cooked. No blood. Like you two in your ridiculous bicep swinging contest. Enough, grow up! Obviously, my gorgeous katana is the only option. Obs. The hell it is. Oh, I'll show you both my katana and send you to actual hell if you'd like. Please stop. Please, I hate when we fight. Or talk. Even when we look each other in the eye. Okay. Earth is holding my spirit animal right now. I can do it. I have this, the skull of Azarov. Great. Instead of slicing it up, you can club it to a second death. Is that like a weapon he has in the actual game? I'm not sure. It's gotta be, right? Is it what he uses to ring the bell? 
Mm. The wraith has been long, right? I'm pretty sure. Hey, Halen. I know this isn't what you want to eat. Hurry up and volunteer to carve up Felix. Uh, I mean, dinner. Felix. He's a survivor. I forget. I'm sure he's gotta be, right? Otherwise, it's going for hours. No hyperbole. They once argued over who had the most effective weapons for 72 straight hours. Oh, no. Looks like we're saving again here. It doesn't matter which one does it. When they're done, they'll take even longer cleaning their weapon, all while explaining the value and maintaining your tools. Despite being a bunch of cold-blooded killers, for some reason they're always terrified of tinnitus. Or is it tetanus? No, tetanus. Tinnitus is the, the ear ringing thing. <laughs> Yeah, why don't you just let me carve up dinner? Splendid idea. We'd hate for it to get cold. He hated it. He hated when it got cold. Hmm. Here's a machete, freshly sharpened. Oh yeah, we got a mini game. All right, let's go. Save it again here. Why not? All right. On the bottom, a target you're going to be pointing at, blah blah blah. It's pretty much the same thing, I imagine. Just hit spacebar. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, not bad. Oh, missed completely. Perfect. Oh, that's pretty good. I see what you can do with a less clumsy weapon. Yeah, I said it. Machetes are dumb. Ender has finally served. For real. Sounds, especially coming from the masked killers while they eat, involves lifting their mask and shoving food up behind them. Or nasty. That would probably only uh, be for a trapper and huntress. Wraith and Spirit don't have masks. Why is Spirit eating at all? Yeah. Spirit, meanwhile, doesn't even eat. He's the only one who seems to be really embracing being dead. They're all dead, right? This is obviously hell. I mean... Come on. We're still trying to be mysterious here. You think mystery comes easy? Lydia and Dwight aren't the only ones who've been working their asses off to make this night perfect. Well, at least they're lifting their masks. This is only 99% as disgusting as it could be if they just tried to mash stuff through there. <laughs> True. Where aren't you hungry? The best things about being dead is not having to eat. It's only one thing. Think about it, Kaelin. Number two is no number two. One less thing to think about in the afterlife. Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what would actually follow. <laughs> You might have noticed, mostly just a bunch of dismembered body parts floating in a spectral form. See how deep this cut on my abdomen is? I don't think my dis digestive tract connects anymore. Between the food and the behavior of the group, this might be the worst meal in history. But even worse is they're staring at you. You're not eating. They don't like that. I think they want an explanation why. What do you want to tell them? Look at this eagle! This is gross. Um, I don't think... I'm gonna go with this is gross or look at the seagull. I just guess I'm sorry. As the, uh, it's not the food or the company. I'm just super self-conscious how I look when I eat. I just pretending to be grossed out by dinner, but have an excuse not to chew in front of everyone. Sorry if that made things awkward. I'm actually extremely hungry. Yeah, watching people eat is gross. Try to relax and not worry what everyone thinks. It's so important to always remember people are watching you, judging you. Definitely not ignoring you, right, guys? Is anyone listening to me? Typically, a group that includes one, if not more, cannibals staring at you with meat juice dripping from their chins would be quite scary. However, right now, you're barely able to keep your head up. 
let alone get scared and run away. I'm a narrator, not a physician. Please don't take this as medical advice. I'm pretty sure you eat, need to eat to stay alive. Oh, hey, it's me again. Your friend, mentor, and guide. Narrator to the narrator, the ocean. Not sure how I feel about that characterization, but I'll allow it. Brought you here. But be the only one who can help you now. There's only one thing you must do to survive. You have to figure out why you're really here. No one can tell you. Unless you follow the right path. Or at least a right path. There's too many of those to count. Hopefully you pick at least one of them. Is there even more wrong paths? Any of them lead to your demise. Others lead to something even worse. Oh, wait, we can actually, like, die in this game? I guess that makes sense. Ah, uh, starting scenes over and having to fast forward back to where you were, am I right? <laughs> this place holds many secrets, even from itself. But the one that truly matters can only be learned if you answered the most important question. Why are you here? Why are you here? Answer that and you'll learn the truth. The ultimate truth. Vague, mysterious. I gotta give it up to this ocean character. Some quality early game storytelling. Hmm. Oh. You wake up to find Huntress holding your limp body, gently pouring cool water into your mouth. Oh good, you're okay. Sometimes when I try and care for people, I have a way of ending up Less alive than when I started. It would be a total bummer if that happened to you. And so long since I had a normal, happy, healthy living person around. Usually I'm just falling in the same old routine of smashing everybody's head open with a hatchet before I really get to know who they are as a person. You. Nearly as scared or too busy writhing in pain to see me for me. Feel nervous in her arms, just because they're maybe crushing you a little bit, but because she is beautiful. Yes, beautiful. I'm just gonna narrate that fact, not, you know, say it out loud as a single word like some creep. <laughs> beautiful mask. Your bunny mask is quite gorgeous. Nice recovery. But now that you're awake and talking, you gotta keep this up. Did you make it yourself? You're the first person to ever ask me that. Yes, I did. You seem so quirky and cool. You could do anything. Own an Etsy store, be a doctor. Why is it that you kill people? Ventress sighs. You can practically see the memories flickering across her eyes. She hasn't tried to kill you yet. That's a good sign. All ever, it's all I was ever taught to do as a young girl, so I thought it was right. Alright, let's go for another save. Even through the mask, you can see that Huntress is blushing a bit. Seems like your line of questioning has made her a little nervous. You didn't eat much, hey, you didn't eat much at dinner. Want a snack? She offers you some jerky. Probably human jerky. But her spice game is on point because it smells pretty damn good. You know what? Let's do it. I think it would make her happy. And who knows? Maybe it isn't human jerky. When I'm murderer's island, you might as well eat as the killers do. Plus, you really are hungry. You can chow down on jerky sensually, right? I'd love some. After a moment of quiet chewing on what you choose to believe is not human thigh meat, you decide to be bold and ask another question. Have you ever been in a relationship before? Dang, you're really going there? You do not play around. <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> Hunter takes a moment to think deeply before answering. I must say, it's quite amusing to see this hulking bombshell get all twisted up. These personal questions. Kudos to you. 
There's this one deer that looked at me quite provocatively in a clearing once. That doesn't count, does it? You hear the faintest giggles bubble up from beneath or from behind Huntress's mask. <laughs> You're so cute, Huntress. No, it doesn't count. Oh, what's this? We found something in the sand. Huntress reaches down to pick it up. It's a hair clip. Probably left by some little girl who was playing on the beach long ago. Who is definitely still alive and not at all dead. Huntress closes the bag of jerky with the hair clip. Seems like she's a little mixed up on how exactly this particular item works. Uh, should you go with the flow or show off some of your knowledge of advanced human ink? Uh, save. No, it's not letting me save because of course it's not. Um, go with the flow? No, let's show her a thing or two. You silly goose. You chuckle before reaching for the bag of jerky. You take the barret off and collect a lock of Huntress's hair, flipping it back into an attractive swoop. Much better. <laughs> oh, nice. Huntress is so happy that you taught her something new about human trinkets. She touches the clip in her hair with a shy smile. Okay, I think we did good. Save again. <laughs> Just as things are really heating up, you hear a flurry of footsteps behind you, and you quickly spin around, ready to fend off whatever new danger has popped up on this strange island. Only to find that it's Dwight and Claudette spinning across the beach. Flipboards in hand, which they're waving in the air above their heads. Very important that we stick to the itinerary, and attend each event as scheduled. Um, playing sick for cute flirt points was not a part of this evening's activities. Um, that's strictly slotted in for after campfire story time. This rate will be late. Playing sick? No, I was... No time for excuses. Well, there is, but that's scheduled for... After what comes after the flirting. <laughs> go, go, go! Okay. <laughs> As everyone has gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claudette quickly make an announcement. We're not going to blame anyone in particular. But someone, and we're not going to say who, so don't worry, um, hasn't been sticking to the schedule. Oh. <laughs> Gee, I wonder who they're talking about. Uh, that means we're behind on time for evening activities. And we'll only have time for one person to share their special spooky nighttime story. Just one story? Story time is my favorite activity. This is a narrative heavy experience. They're telling us only one person gets to share. How will we decide who? Oh great, we have to decide as a group? That never goes well. Whoever did this, step up now. I swear I won't be angry. I'm really chop your head clean off. No muss, no fuss. Or no fuss, no muss. <sighs> Voice trembling, you realize this is probably it for you. But you embrace your fate. Uh, sorry everyone. You're talking about me. To be honest, I still don't understand how this whole schedule thing works. I guess I lost track of time while I was passed out? I've been there before. Even though it's taking some pressure off of me, which is an absolute dream coming true. Is it really fair to pick on the newbie? Seriously, has anything here ever happened on schedule even once? Damn it, Donald. If you try to flex that authority gimmick one more time, so help me... I'll snap your heads off so quick, then I'll drown you in his blood, Cynthia. Plus and must are back on. You two know I love to hack, slash, and slice. We all know you love to kill. Almost all you talk about. 
Nobody named any names. Who even knows any names? Not us. I renounce my name. Who's Donald? Who's Dwight? Who even knows anymore? Call me nobody. <laughs> Still gotta get started on story time, so... Alright, who do you think should go? Oh, damn it, that's a name. <laughs> Um, please pick somebody quickly so that this tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. I want Huntress. I choose you, Huntress. Oh, this entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. Let's be careful with the catchphrases, will ya? The Huntress steps up to tell her story. Campfire flickers in her faraway eyes. There's a village outside the deep and ominous redwood. No child dare step foot past the threshold of thick trees and brush that separated safety from the unknown. Grown men that ventured grown men that ventured in often would never return. The sounds that echoed out into the village were something inhuman. The women of the town told the story to the young children, hoping that it would be enough to dissuade them from curious Exploration beyond the boundaries of the village. They told it of a creature that lurks in the woods. Half woman, half beast. Singing like a siren. Haunting and beautiful. Her voice, the last relic of her humanity. It lulls all who hear into, hear into her domain. And not precocious child nor fierce soldier can escape once you are in her clutches. Those who have seen her say she wears a mask of hair, stained with the blood of so many poor souls. The hatchet she wields has been brought down brutally on the skull of many an unsuspecting hunter. Nightmare doesn't end there. But what's a hungry beast to do in the frigid winters with nothing but hunter meat to live off of? It is said that the huntress, as the villagers called her, didn't bring herself to kill the young girls she came across in the forest. Instead, they suffered an even worse fate. Longing for a child of her own, she'd bring them back to her secluded cabin to keep them safe. She'd wrap a tight cord of rope around their necks and affix them to the wall. That way, they'd be warm. That way, they'd be out of harm's way. The hunter would even bring the girls presents. Toys she pilfered from others' bodies. Masks she'd fashioned out of things from the cottage, and little dolls made of grass and twigs. These toys did nothing to quell the children's fear. Within days, the girls would waste away from starvation and dehydration. For all her good intentions, Tris had never learned how to care for a human child. See a tear creep down from under Huntress's mask. Suddenly, the most beautiful singing voice you've ever heard fills the air. Sleep, my darling tiny ones, tucked within your bed so tight. Else the old gray wolf will come and grab you by your side. The brief moment of silence, and you feel the need to contribute to the stirring moments. Join the singing. Oh, too bad we can't save it. He'll snatch you between his teeth. On the bed's edge you'll sleep. Drag you to the forest deep. Beneath the quaking tree. Huntress can't believe you know this song. You share an intimate glance across the campfire. You'll close your eyes and fall asleep. Count the little woolly sheep. Tuck so tightly you must keep. Or he will come for you. The song ends and you are both met with silence around the campfire. I love that song. Was it uh, Bayou, Bayou Shack? The old soul would be at Lullaby, right? Bayou Shaka, yeah. Bayou, Bayou, Bayou Shaka. 
It's a song my mother used to sing to me before bed every night. But now I must go. Memories, they are so much. On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break. I sweat up for a little bit. But they all can have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. A true moment of peace and tranquility that lasts for all of seven seconds because Trickster shows up and he's blaring his latest song. Hey baby, you look lonely. Mind if I join you? He doesn't wait for an answer. I know you've been hearing from these guppies all day. I want you to hear something from a big fish like me. Something special those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. I'm the ultimate catch on this island. The only lobster in an ocean of sardines. No one can give you what I can. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby. Trickster leaves. Get a bit confused about what to make of his cryptic clues, but you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Huntress approaches you. Of course you like my story. Who wouldn't? I had everything. Cute kids, dead men, a huntress. I find that all stories are better with the sound of a burning fire filling the air around you. Oh, that's a new picture. A huntress has short hair too. I didn't realize that. All the smoke, however, I could do without. I'd rather eat barbecue than smell like it. Let's rinse off all that campfire with a dip in the hot tub, shall we? Ooh, that sounds good. Dipping in hot tubs with a huntress. You've come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow her and offer like that. Just don't forget our little talk. What? That we have to try and find the reason that we're here? Hmm. Let's save. You and your storyteller friend slip into the water. Just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump from the ocean into the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion can handle it. Now before you run off, I wanted to make something clear. You know that half woman, half beast I was talking about in my story? That's me. I'm her. Um, yeah, I got that. Uh, let's go see. No way, how cool. Really awesome. Thanks for being vulnerable and telling such a personal story. Aww. Charlie twirls her hair. Uh -uh, I tell the truth. What do you think of my tale? Do I have the makings of a best-selling author, such as the comedic mastermind? What is it? Dovet. Dostoevsky? Hmm. It was a really well-told narrative. Clear? A uh, clear beginning, middle, and end. Riveted from the start. Plus the woman in the forest. I mean, you are clearly not a true villain. You are just a traumatized child. Okay, now you're just being a suck-up. <laughs> Huntress's eyes leer at you from beneath her mask. She's had her time in the spotlight and is playing coy now. Call out her tired storytelling or chuckle awkwardly. Hmm. I think we should go with chuckle awkwardly.
Why are you laughing? I can help with giggle when I'm both about to die and also maybe falling in love. I can't believe how awkward this intimidating woman seems right now. It's actually pretty endearing. And you notice the temperature has dropped significantly despite your steamy company. It's a little chilly, and your bare shoulders must be freezing. Step back to the fire and put me to bed, eh? <laughs> I would hate to intrude on whatever smooth moves you're about to unveil were about to unveil themselves. Let's live again. Let's go. Um, but it's time for bed. Usually nighttime is when I do my best hunting. After a day like today, even I'm pretty tuckered out. Will I see you tomorrow? Follow me if I don't see you first. Oh <laughs> no. You make a cute little bow hunting motion. Huntress catches the imaginary arrow you shoot in her teeth. <laughs> then bites down hard, snapping it in half. <laughs> At least you think that's what she's doing. It's kind of hard to tell. Good night, my little snack. I'm not sure that wasn't a reference to actually eating you. Let's hope not. Get over to the campfire. The heat is comforting on this chilly night. Looking into the crackling embers, you think about Huntress's story of the half-human beast that abducted all those innocent children in an attempt to save them that led to their doom. Are you a mistaken prisoner here on this island? Is this your salvation, or will it be your demise? Before you can dwell too much on your fate, Planet and Dwight arrive. There are now familiar creepy smiles stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see a smile like that lit by the firelight. We must apologize for the accommodations. We weren't prepared for another guest, but we're going to make you comfortable or die trying. I hand over a pillow and blanket and welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. Perhaps some music will put you at ease? And just try to keep the volume to a minimum. Our other guests aren't the type you'll want to rob of their beauty sleep. Oh, minigame time. Save the game. Alright, let's go. Uh, as you relax and look into the fire, the radio begins to fuzz and flicker. You examine it and decide you might adjust the dial and fix it. Oh wait, which one do we want? I'm trying to listen, is there like sound cues? I'm not really hearing anything. Let's talk about part two. Uh, let's see what's on this station. Sounds like it's a dev for the game. Make outfits, fits, everybody that's part of what makes Dead by Daylight this amazingly rich and passionate environment. It's me, groups of people who interact on every single possible social platform, in person. It means people who play together, but even the people who play by themselves and never talk to anybody. Uh, so it's important for us to, to be able to break it down and, and figure out exactly who is part of the community and how do we listen to them? How do we get close enough that we can actually hear what makes them happy, what makes them excited, what worries them? Mm -hmm. We need to know about that. So uh, the other part of community for us is the community team. It's our team that we built. Obviously, this was a very small thing. Uh, four years ago, it was pretty much just uh, Dave and, and Ash and I talking to you live and trying to... Okay, enough. I think we need to get another... If we listen more, can we try to get another station? Okay. 
That's just fine. I don't hear anything. Okay, we've got some music on this one. Hey, Deep. And hydrate. Okay, I'll drink some more of my lemonade I got. Hmm. Ugh. Thank you for the redeem. Lemonade isn't really going well with having to talk a lot, though, <laughs> with this game. Alright. I want to try to listen to every station. There's just more music. Ooh, I like this one. I'm trying to see if there's like, I bet you there's probably like some hidden message about you. Maybe it has to do with secret tricks or ending. Alright, we'll turn. Uh, no matter how many things you listen to, you still can't sleep. You decide to ask one of the killers to spend a little more time with you until you're sleepier. Uh, who would you like to summon to your side as you lay by the fire? Huntress? Yeah, we're going all in on Huntress, baby. Huntress, are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. Huntress appears in an instant. Really didn't hear her coming. More than happy to tell you her secret for falling asleep when she's feeling restless. Oh? If a Soviet lullaby doesn't work, this special mushroom tea has always done the trick. When I'm not coating the blade of my hatchet in it to ease the passing of my victims, I'm steeping it in a piping hot mug of water. Try it. You do. I start to feel sleepy, except this isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed? You try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. Dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. You shouldn't still be as spooky. I know you've had a whole day of strange voices in your head. One is still undeniably odd really worked up a sweat watching those killers toss the ball around, huh? Would it have hurt so much to go splash around in some cool ocean waves afterwards? I'm just saying. I'm out here, you know? You awake suddenly to see someone looming over you. Wraith stares at you awkwardly. He says nothing. He just stares. You look around to see if there's something going on behind you. Or on either side, but nope. Just staring. Oh, you're awake. I saw you with the Huntress right before bedtime. Are you making some sort of uh, alliance? Are you with... Ray scans the horizon. Them. I'm just making sure you are who you say you are. I've been burned before, and some... Things seems off on this island since you've arrived. Even more off than usual. Maybe we could talk more about that tomorrow. It's just since you got here, I just I think we could have a really nice day tomorrow together. It's just you have no idea how long I've been here with these monsters. To be honest, I have no idea either. There's this awful. Boring and loud and stupid. You're different. There's only someone here on my level. You're thoughtful, interesting, and gentle. I think we could, uh, you know, have fun. 
I could show you some. I could show you some cool stuff if you want. If you don't, it's totally cool. I get it. No pressure. In fact, I probably just forget I was here. Good night. Finally alone, for real this time, maybe. You drift off to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. Starting to think we might make the wrong move here at some point. Who knows? Wait a second, where are we? This isn't... Oh jeez, it is. One of those reality show confessional rooms where all the contestants talk directly to a camera. I think today went really well. These are some of my first interactions with someone who isn't a parent that didn't end in bloodshed or untimely perishing in my Russian cottage. Uh, I'm counting today as a win, no matter what happens. What do you think of the newcomer? Do I have to say? Oh, I do? Okay. Uh, attractive. Mysterious. I really don't know that many other words since I was raised by my mom in the woods until she was skewered by an elk and I had to wash her entrails off my... What is it? Seraphan? What is it? What is, what is that? I don't know what that is. Seraphan. Now I'm curious. Do, 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 seraphan. Oh, it uh, seems like it's a kind of dress. Outfit. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I have never heard of it before. Um, I don't know who this newcomer will want to spend time with. Will want to spend time with tomorrow. I for one will not allow my guard down easily. Who knows about the others? Wraith, I think, knows more than he's letting on about this place. He's a hard nut to crack. And meanwhile, Spirit is just screaming all the time. Major Buzzkill and Trapper. Oof, where do I even begin with Trapper? He's buff, sure, but daddy issues much? Sheesh. Look, I don't need anyone. I'm perfectly fine on my own since my mother died. I eat a fine diet of raw deer, bear, and human, and I'm fit as a fiddle. That being said, something about this newcomer makes me think that I might be missing out on some huge part of this thing called life. If I'm being honest, I want to kill just about every person I meet within a minute of meeting them. <laughs> Even a few people I can tolerate, I want to see suffer for a long time before I kill them. But this person, for some reason, I would like them to continue living. For now. One false step and... <laughs> well, you know everyone calls me Trapper for a reason. They better call me Trapper. I swear, if I watch this la later and you list me as Evan, I'm gonna kill you... Like the, what is it, the Chiron guy? Uh, I don't know what that means. I don't really care. This island is full of people who don't really like me. So what's one more? I don't want to get distracted from my plan anyways. Have you ever felt absolutely nothing inside? It's fine. <laughs> Still alone. <laughs> Open your eyes. The sun is shining. Not a cloud in the sky. And you feel great. Totally well rested. You're not even suspicious of the fact that you fell asleep by the campfire, but woke up several yards down the beach. Wait, are you on vacation? Yesterday, nothing more than a strange dream. No, not a dream. You really are here on a, for another day. Why? I, I have no idea. You're obviously a weirdo. Speaking of weirdos, I see the rest of the gang is hanging out on the beach. This is definitely not a dream. 
I wouldn't rule out a nighttime or I wouldn't rule out a nightmare just yet though. At least they make for a sexy bunch, no? Ah, it's Trickster again. Hmm. I don't call him Trickster because he's going to skateboard. Definitely didn't get that name because he brings people drinks. So they can have a good morning. Uh oh. That's true. Could be an unreliable narrator. Uh, this is not Parliament, and the floor does not recognize the ocean to speak out of turn at this moment. All right, I'm going to save the game again. <laughs> All right, can we please move on? Yes, of course. Apologies. Last few minutes aside, have you been enjoying your time here on the island? We love to hear that. Isn't it, isn't that what this place is all about? Finding love? No. Shut up, Dwight. You'll get us all killed. Again. And again. And again. <laughs> Hmm. 
Can we pl please sign this non disparage agreement? Disparagement? Uh. Uh, no, I don't like. Should we do it? Um, no, I'm not gonna sign it. I refuse. No, I will not say anything negative about this island. You have my word that I, Kaelin, agree with the term- Wait, what? I said no! <laughs> Did they force you? Let me- I'm gonna try that again. Wait, how, where were we at? We weren't too far, I hope. Uh. Please sign this- So if I say no... I think it does it does make you do it. <laughs> That's funny. What happens if I say yes though? Okay. All right. <laughs> Alright, time for breakfast, it looks like. Mmm, perfect timing. Everyone rolls into the dining area to lard up those sexy little bellies with pancakes and bacon and... So much for maintaining these beach bods. We're all half naked in a tropical paradise. Can we get some strawberries here? A yogurt? Hedric Powers only gets you so far. Even killers watch their sodium intake. You take your plate and sit down. Thinking about yesterday and the whirlwind of feelings you experienced. Danger, dread, disorientation. It was like going through puberty again, except all in one day. On a beautiful and mysterious island. It's like you're not the only one doing some introspection, though. Trapper stands up to talk about how his day went, in case anyone was wondering. Personally, I wasn't. Yeah, who cares about Trapper? <laughs> I'll be honest, I didn't expect you to survive yesterday, so congrats, I guess. Whether you survive today is 50-50 at best. Good luck. Uh, now Hunter sets up to talk about her feelings. I feel a stirring inside my animal heart. Something I never felt before. It's almost like the feeling right before I go in for the kill, but softer, warmer. Sounds like it could be love. Or maybe just indigestion from all that raw beef she had last night. Oh well, it surely must be it. No one else would weirdly stand up during breakfast soup. And just like that, here comes spirit. If I look especially well rested this morning, it's not because I slept well. As you know, I'm much too dedicated to finding revenge to ever sleep again. Uh, but because you all really left me alone yesterday to be my best... Not constantly annoyed self. And I thank you for that. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go back to quietly resenting being trapped here with you all. While looking cute doing so. I'm uh, guessing Wraith has had enough time to work up the courage to speak in front of a group. Ah, perfect. There he is. Take us home, Wraith. I'm glad the introduction of Kaelin to her island paradise. And yeah, that was in quotations. Didn't it distract me from my normal routine. Ignoring all of you and vice versa. This place is an eternal prison of suspicion and suffering, and no one cares. I'm still the only one asking any questions. I'm asking a question too. It's, when will Ray shut up? Now they're looking at you expectantly. Wait, are you supposed to stand up and explain how yesterday made you feel? Alright, can we save? Save. Uh, I think I need to process everything by myself. See you all soon. Damn, what a power play. Keep him wanting more. You're getting good at this game. Or a uh, sexy true-to-life experience. Maybe you didn't get to eat any breakfast, but so be it. Uh, after breakfast, you head to the hot tub by yourself to clear your head. Yesterday was in short a lot. 
Before you get there, though, something catches your attention. You hear that? Who are you addressing? Me? Oh, yeah, I guess. It is okay, right? You know, I might be pursuing a relationship with one of these four fine killers, but it feels like the person I'm getting to know the most is you, narrator. It's only okay in so much as it serves to illustrate that you've lost your mind, seeing how I'm not real and all. Yeah, I heard it this time. I think it's coming from behind the pool shed. Oh no, stick it in there. A little more. A little more. Oh yeah, that's it. Yes. How does that feel? Intense. Nice. Yeah, that feels right. This this is uncomfortable. Oh no. <laughs> I want you to take that and put it right. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Just like that? Exactly like that. I swear, I had no idea these two even do whatever it is they're doing. I'm afraid to look. Please say something so they know you're close by and can hear everything. Um, oh wow, look at the super cool bottle of Trickster brand suntan lotions on my left on a chair. Anyone know where I could buy some? Damn it. Oh, come on, a little privacy please. Joy is panting and Claudette has a crazed look in her eyes. Sorry, I didn't know how else to let you know I was here and I could hear you. Well, you know. No, what? What do you think we were doing? You were doing... I don't know exactly what you were doing, but it sounded like, uh, fun? You think two people trying to find new ways to kill each other in a desperate search to make their own death permanent is fun? Oops. We have five minutes to ourselves every day, and we spend it hoping if we stab each other in just the right spot, we won't get resurrected. I've come to believe that the key is finding the exact place we need to bleed out from, and I believe that place is our appendix. Why else would it be there? Makes sense to me. Do you actually think we were me and him? Dwight? Oh, <laughs> you don't have to laugh that hard. They get it. <laughs> My life is a nightmare, and yet somehow it's never been worse than right now. Let's go, lover boy. I noted all our entry runes, and our five minutes is up anyway. Good luck, Halen. You're gonna need it. And hey, if you figure out how to escape this island, just make sure your ghost tells us how. That was both a tragedy and a comedy. A cragmity. Shut up, I like it. Anyway, where were we? Oh yes. You're heading to the hot tub by yourself to clear your head. Yesterday was insured a lot. So far, today has been exhausting too. But you're dedicated to achieving a true center a true centered self sense of calm. No drama, no bullshit. Just soaking up sun in a heated pool. Today you're on a date with you. Ooh, I like that. I want to be on a date with me. Who would make the first move? And aside from that disturbing thought, all is going to plan until a shadow blocks your precious sun. Spiky tipped. Like a palm tree is bending over to screw with you. But it's no tree at all. It's... Hey, babe. Breakfast is weird, huh? Everyone just getting up and announcing how they're feeling? What's that about? Some forced kind of check-in with the group? I don't like it. Fishy. Kind of lazy. Whatever, though. Breakfast is dumb. No one should eat before noon. Or after 4 p.m. <laughs> yeah, I do intermittent fasting. You see my abs, by the way? <laughs> Maybe you can see them later at my private stage on the other island. You know, IP Island, where all the Hollywood celebs hang out if you play your cards right. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> so that's where all the IP branded killers are at. <laughs> I can give you a private show. Catch you around. His abs are pretty amazing. You gotta give him that. And that blow-up bat? Threatening but adorable. Makes for an interesting silhouette. Genius design. <laughs> He's a psychopath, just like the rest of them. You don't gotta give him anything. And we're not best friends. Just because we had a little talk about doing a little talking. Not an open invitation to go smashing the fourth wall every five seconds. Okay, now that guy's gone, and we've got some ground rules established that we're definitely going to abide by. Time to lay back, take some deep, slow breaths, and... Nope, another shadow. These people will not leave you alone. Let's see who it is this time. Aha, uh -huh, it is Huntress. That makes sense. You two have gotten pretty cozy. We should get out of here. I know a place that's quiet and out of the way. No one will be able to hunt us. I mean, hear us there. Doesn't that sound intriguing? But immediately a flood of worry uh, floods your brain. Did you pack a picnic? Bring your swimsuit, a pocket knife? Now you decide to bring as much as you can. You may have to make a run for it at some point, and you should be prepared. together Are you really ready for this i mean they call her the huntress not the hugstress all right let's save um you look up at this towering goddess trying to form a sentence when suddenly or you can decide if you want to go off with her the trapper interjects i demand that you reconsider why settle for a bunny with a hatchet if you can have everything you ever wanted Tough choice. Uh, you weigh your options quickly because you can only go on a date, one date today, and you also don't want to be hacked to pieces for saying the wrong thing. It's always good to remember that these are all cold-blooded killers, but you know what they say, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And then die a horrible, wretching, writhing death after drinking it because the lemons were poisoned all along. Sorry, this island has really gotten me tilted. So who will it be? Huntress. Wee. <laughs> um. You and the Huntress make your way to this secluded beach house. Uh, your heart thumps in your chest. I uh, don't look it up. Th or, or thrums is the real word. I swear. Are these nerves of excitement or terror? Isn't it fun to mix the sexy and the horrifying? Huntress is quiet as a mouse as she guides you through the island forest. Uh, you struggle to keep up with her. She moves like a jungle cat. All muscle and silent leaps across thorny bush. Uh, she halts suddenly and you crash into her, having been desperately trying to keep up. Uh, you follow her gaze and realize that you've arrived. A cabin in the woods. Obligatorily in nearly all horror films and stories. You've come here willingly with a fearsome killer. Great job. The cabin is cozy, but something seems off about it. You can't quite put your finger on what it is. Hunter stares at you through her bunny mask, hugging her head to the side as if trying to gauge your reaction to her hideaway. Are you going to invite me inside? Oh, why do you need an invitation? Are you a vampire? No. Oh. Is it just me, or did Huntress seem a little disappointed? Didn't peg her for a lover of the fang, 
but hey, I don't judge. Come in, let's explore. Now you follow her inside. It's creepy, rickety, and definitely not up to code, but it has a certain homey charm. You're quite the decorator. She blushes. Indeed she is. A chandelier made of bones hangs delicately from the foyer ceiling, and a collection of trinkets lines the mantle. Something tells you that the people who once owned these things are not of this mortal coil anymore. Could you be Huntress' next victim? The thought gives you a wicked thrill. Hey, she's looking at you again. What do you think of my collection? Oh no. <laughs> um... I could learn to like this. I'm more of a minimalist. It's so much. Um, we'll go with I could learn to like this, maybe? Uh, I could certainly learn to like this. The whole place is quite tactile. There's so much to look at. Uh, the organized chaos makes me want to crowd things with my hands. I knew you'd like it here. You have the eyes of someone who appreciates fine stolen things. I can't wait to go treasure hunting with you. We can find so many more goodies on the island. But first, what do you think of the other killers on the island? I mean, Trickster is pretty out there, but everyone else seems like they have interesting backstories and whatnot. Hmm. A little gossip, huh? What are you playing at, Kaelin? Huntress considers this for a beat. She seems to have two modes, thoughtful and explosive. She hoped to never be in the splash zone when the explosive part emerges. Why, are you jealous? Before he can answer, the house begins to shake. Huntress loses her balance on the termite-infested floor and falls into your arms. You are not mad about it. Before you have time to enjoy taking this moment in... Oh! Oh no, it's an attack! A horde of killer crabs invade through the crevices in the poorly constructed cabin. They race at you and Huntress in swarms, clacking their razor-sharp claws at you. You must act quickly, what will you do? Gonna save the game quickly here. All right. Um, I have a Shaska. Ooh, that seems like a good idea. But what is the Shaska? This must be some kind of weapon. Oh yes. It's like a, a Russian sh saber, a single-edged, single-handed, and guardless backsword. Okay. Yeah, if we're gonna do this, we're definitely gonna do that. We're not gonna run and hide. I don't think the Huntress would like that. I don't think she'd like it if we tried to heal, shield her either. Um, we'll do battle right by her side. I think she'd like that the most. Uh, you quickly reach out and grab a Shashka off the, the wall. Um, being the highly educated person that you definitely are, you know that a Shashka is a Russian sh sword, not an umbrella or a can of cola or something else like that. Back to back with Huntress, you both hack away at the attacking crustaceans. Uh, you manage to slay the majority of the killer crabs, the ones you miss go scurrying away back into the hidey, their hidey holes. Huntress turns to you with a gaze that's full of passion and intrigue. However, before it bubbles over, she looks away, suppressing this feeling. Is she nervous? Ugh. Ugh. Huntress sits down on the wicker couch and begins cleaning the guts off her hatchet.
Hmm. All right, it's an obligatory scene for every killer. You're just happy. Ooh. Oh boy. My voice is not happy with me. Looks like we're having crab for dinner. <laughs> oh no. She doesn't smile at your joke. She has that ponderous look on her face again. You join her on the couch. Man, sometimes those near-death experiences really get me thinking about what I want in life. I think I'd really like to start a family one day. How about you? Um... Mm, of course, maybe one day with the right person. I like that one the most. I mean, it's a life-changing decision. You have to make sure it's right. Ventress smiles coyly. A good answer. You never know what kind of weirdos are out there. What were you like as a kid? You try to imagine this giantess as a meek child in a puffer coat wandering about the forest. Ventress chuckles, her laugh quite cute and soft. I was so innocent. We hunted to survive, then went back to the cottage. A mother would tell me stories and we drink tea and imagine a life far away from the woods. I'm more like this. I suppose I finally achieved what she always wanted from me. But since coming here, something feels off. It's beautiful and warm, and everyone is so attractive. Like thirst traps galore. But don't you get the feeling that something is coming for us? Oh no, she's on to you. But on to you about what? Swirling memories rush through your head. Nightmares, visions of a dark, cl dark cloud, Claudette and Dwight's vacant stares that belie some sort of hypnosis. Quickly validate her theory or try to push it off. I agree with her. I think you're onto something. What do you know? How long have you all been here? Do you remember anything at all about why we might be here? I've been having these dreams, seeing things. I think we are all serving some greater purpose here. Huntress reveals a strange object that she stole from near the stage where a trickster performs. It has some strange symbol on it. Uh, truthfully, it doesn't seem that strange to you. It's just a glass bottle. However, the label is interesting. Hands it over to you, but before she can explain her theory, Claudette and Dwight burst in on you and interrupt. We have a dramatic announcement, but it needs to happen back at the beach. Now you arrive at the beach and realize you are set up. There's no big announcement after all. What we have here is a good old fashioned rivalry. It's true. Exactly like that voice that we cannot hear and certainly aren't referencing says. We were forced to interrupt your lovely date by another killer. They are here and ready to make you an offer of love you won't be able to deny. Oh no. <laughs> Trapper emerges from the water. Is he in slow motion? He's pure thirst. He's Paul Newman on horseback. He's Denzel on the cover of GQ. Manly manliness brought to life. Also, is he holding his breath under there this whole time, waiting for his cue? <laughs> That's commitment to a bit, if I've ever seen it. I heard you spent the day in a quaint cottage. That's cute. How about a quaint mansion? Or better yet, how about one on each continent? Yeah, I'm including Antarctica. I'm really, really rich. Think of how cozy we can get there in a snowy 10-foot bedroom chateau. Um, one of those pools that is half indoor, half outdoor, but nice and warm throughout. That way you can kill a mama polar bear from the outside while watching her cubs cry over her body from the inside. <laughs> oh, wow, Trapper is the real deal. And by real, I do mean really, and by deal, I mean evil. Plus, you really want to hunt for your food for the rest of your life? 
With me, you get it both ways. Savagery and someone to clean up after you. Sounds nice, huh? Ugh, as if. Yeah, no, we're not gonna go for the trapper. That life isn't for me, bro. I'm very impressed. You can speak with implied quotation marks. Very cool. This guy is a total douche nozzle. Try hard much? He's like the turnoff of the century Pacific Northwest version of a Wall Street bro. Trust me, it tracks. Patrick Bateman with a huge chip on his oh. <laughs> oh. Isn't that Patrick Bateman? I'm pretty sure that's American Psycho, right? Is that, um, what's his name's character? Christian Bale? All right, I have to look this up now. Patrick Bateman. I'm pretty sure. Yep, Patrick Bateman is a fictional character. From, um, it is American Psycho, right? I'm pretty sure. Yep, yeah, Christian, uh, Christian Bale. I was right there. What? Just tell me the mu movie. Yeah, American Psycho. Okay. I was right. <laughs> mm. Thanks, but no thanks. Even to anger. To your anger or Trapper's anger? Because if it's your anger, it would kind of mean that you get angry at him for doing this. And you'd kind of stick with your guns. And if you go thanks but no thanks. That kind of... That's in question, quotation marks. Oh. Uh, I think we'll go thanks and no thanks. Yep, okay. I'm into a quieter lifestyle. I relish my independence and don't need someone to wipe my butt for me. <laughs> you run back into the huge arms of Huntress. She hugs you tight. So tight you think you might feel the life le leave your body for just a moment. But it hurts so good. <laughs> you know what? I'm impressed that you stood up to me. I appreciate someone giving me their totally honest opinion. Even if that opinion makes me want to carve out your liver. <laughs> And the butt wiping comment? That's not what I meant by clean up after you. And I'm hiring someone to do that for me the moment I get home. <laughs> Trapper leaves and you turn to Huntress, walking in slow motion back into the water. It's pretty weird. He's just going to stay in there all night. Shall we continue our date? Hmm. Huntress leads you back to her cabin. Thought you'd remember the way, but it's like the forest has completely changed. Nothing is familiar. Better not get lost out here. You believe that guy? Classic trapper, pulling a move like that. So glad you chose me, though. I don't think we've explored all there is between us yet. She winks a bunny mask eye and scoops you up onto her back. Huntress runs through the woods. With you piggyback riding her. The wind ruffles your hair. Animals clear a path for the, the mighty woods woman as she races by like the lead from that famous teen vampire drama in that one scene where he calls her a spider monkey. Is that, is that a Twilight reference? It's gotta be. Pinterest doesn't call you that. Wee! Eventually she gently lowers you to the ground you take in your surroundings, a wooden clearing in the forest. Huntress prances around like a deer in a meadow. I like to come here sometimes to clear my head and hack up a few cute woodland creatures. Foxes are my favorite to slaughter. They think they're so cute and sly. I see right through them. They're just assholes. Great with hot sauce. Huntress hears wrestling and darts off to find its source, crouching down low like an animal. Now you're alone in the middle of the forest. Which way did you come from again? No idea. Your sense of direction is all off. Hmm.
mellifluous voice floats through the air, landing upon your ears like syrup honey. Come find me. Oh. Playing a game of hide and seek, huh? We're hunting the huntress. I like it. Oh, wait, there's instructions? Oh, okay. All right, ready. Oh, there she is. Perfect. Perfect. Not bad. Not bad. Ice, perfect. Tag. You bop Huntress on the shoulder when you find her. She high fives you. You trying to date this young lady or just throw down all day? I never heard that phrase before. Throw down? Was that like meaning like the high five? You're so good at hiding. I'm having a real blast. Thanks. They say it takes 10,000 hours of practice to get good at something. Hey, they do say that. That was fun, huh? You're trying to just relax and have a good time. It's really hard for me. Anytime I let my guard down, something terrible happens. Aww. Ugh. 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 Uh, I think we're probably gonna end it there. I'll save the game. We did pretty good, though. I do want to play more, but uh, I gotta eat. So, that's gonna be it for me for tonight. Hope you guys have a good rest of your evening. Um, let's see, who is... Who is streaming? Um... Uh, quite a few people. Um... Mm -mm -mm. I think we'll do Death Blooms. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Thank everybody for coming. And I will see you next time. Um, I do need to stream more. Hopefully I will. But I'll see you guys later. Bye!